Hi, this is Elijah with the Oxygen team. And in this video, we're going to be going over the global style options that are available in Oxygen. To start, let's go to Manage, Settings, and Global Styles in the Oxygen Builder. Here we can see all of our global style submenus. Let's take a look at colors first. The colors menu allows you to manage the global colors used on your site. Global colors are special because when you change a global color, it changes the color anywhere it's been used. This makes managing color schemes across your site very easy and intuitive. To add a color, click add color, type a name, choose a color, and click add color again. That color is now registered as a global color and will show up in any color picker in Oxygen. If we go over to the background color for this section, you can see that our new red global color has been added. To remove it, click the trash can icon. Now let's jump back to the global styles and go to fonts. Here we have our display font setting and our text font setting. Display fonts are used for heading elements. So if we change this, you'll see that our heading elements on the page all change. Text font is used for body text or text elements. So we can also change that. And you can see that the styling adjusts in the preview. If you're using a Google font, you can also specify the weights and whether to load italics from Google fonts by clicking the weights link below the font dropdown. By selecting these boxes, only the selected weights and italics will ever be loaded on your site. This is a good way to optimize your site and make sure you're not using a bunch of different weights when you don't need to. You can also add fonts here. Click add font, type a font name, and then you can choose a font family for that font specification. And now that will show up in the font family dropdown for any elements. Here you can see our font name, which is using Georgia. Next, let's jump back to global styles and take a look at the heading settings. The heading settings allow us to determine how our H1 through H6 elements look. For example, we can change the font size of an H1 element, the font weight, and it's important to note that the changes cascade downward. So if you change something on an H1 that's not explicitly defined for an H2 onward, that H2 onward will inherit the setting from H1. To illustrate this, let's change the font weight back to 700, and you can see that all of our headings change. We can also change the color to something like red, but if we explicitly set the H2 color to something like black, then you can see the H2 onward are now black. Next, let's take a look at the body text settings. This allows us to determine the default styles for our text elements. For example, we can change the font size, we can change the font weight, and we can change the line height. Now, the line height does affect heading elements as well, so keep that in mind while you're making adjustments. Now, let's take a look at the link settings. The link settings will allow us to determine the styling for all links if we'd like. For example, we have a inline text link here, a text link there, and if we change the link color, it's gonna change both of these. We can also change the font weight. We can change the de text decoration. And we can change the hover color for links. Now if we jump back to our link settings, we also have menus for text links, link wrappers, and buttons. Text links are going to have the same settings as the all menu. Uh, link wrapper will have sim similar settings. And then the button will have font weight, and a border radius option. So this allows us to get a consistent style for all of our buttons regarding our border radius. Now let's take a look at page width. This is gonna be the container width for your uh, site. So for example, if you want a much narrower site, we can change this to something like 768. And you can see that the default 
container width for all of our sections is now constrained to 768 pixels. As a general rule, you'll probably want to leave this at the default unless you're looking for a very specific uh, effect. Largely, you can adjust the padding or width of the elements themselves rather than adjusting the page width unless you want your entire site to have the same container width. Next up is the settings for sections. This just allows us to define a default container padding for all section elements. So if we change this, for example, to 120 on top, 120 on bottom, you can see that all of our sections now have adjusted padding. We can also change the left and right padding if we want. Generally, it's better to have more padding. So if you want your sections to have a consistent uh, top and bottom, left and right padding, this is the place to adjust it. You can also always adjust it on an element level, which will override the global settings. For example, let's select this section. And even though we have a container padding on top of 120 pixels, we can go to advanced size and spacing, and we can adjust that down if we'd like for just this section. Next, let's go back to our global styles and let's take a look at Animate on Scroll. Animate on Scroll allows us to determine default settings for any element that has animations enabled under its effects menu. We can set the animation type, like fade, flip, or slide. We can set the animation duration. We can set the animation anchor, which determines which part of the element in relation to the viewport triggers the animation to start. For example, if we choose top top, then when the top of the element reaches the top of the viewport, the animation will be triggered. Animation easing determines the speed curve of the animation. Animation trigger offset allows you to offset the trigger point for the element in relation to the viewport. Animation delay is a number of milliseconds before the animation starts after it's been triggered. Animate only once allows you to set an animated element to animate once and then never reset unless the page is refreshed. For example, let's go ahead, now that we have some uh, default animation settings, let's go ahead and enable animation on this heading. So we'll select the heading, go to advanced, effects, animate on scroll, and since we have global animation settings set up, all we have to do is check the enable animation box and this element will inherit the animation settings. So if we change this to fade, you can see that that element now fades, fade up, etc. Now note that if we set some explicit settings on this element itself over in the properties pane, then it will override the global settings for this element only. So, as you can see, this element has animated. If we scroll up and then scroll back down, it animates again. If we choose yes on animate only once, it's going to trigger once, and when we scroll back up, it doesn't reset. Next, we have our disable on dropdown. This allows you to disable animations below certain viewport widths. This is usually a good idea because mobile devices are limited on resources and animations can be somewhat resource intensive. So it's usually best to disable animations at below a certain viewport width. Now let's jump back to global styles and take a look at scripts. This allows you to enable smooth scroll to hash links, which is a feature of one page sites most commonly where you click a link and the viewport smoothly scrolls to the target of that link. So we'll go ahead and check this box and then we get to ch set the scroll time in milliseconds. So generally you don't want it too fast. We'll set it at 500 milliseconds. Now to illustrate this, let's go ahead and set up a hash link and show how the smooth scrolling works. Let's select our section here. And first thing you want to do is you want to grab the ID of the element which you want to scroll to. And you can do that at the top of the properties pane there. Now that we have the ID, we can choose any element with a link field. Let's select this button. And here's the URL field. And we're going to put in a hashtag or a pound symbol. And then the ID of the element we want it to scroll us to when we click it. Let's go ahead and save that. And then let's take a look at the front end to see the effect. 
scroll down to where we can click this button. Let's hit it. And you can see we smoothly scroll to where this section is at the top of our viewport. Those are the global style options available in Oxygen. Again, this is Elijah with the Oxygen team, and thank you for watching.